my interest in woodworking. It started with a ninth grade wood class. You know, I started and made a few little simple projects all by hand, and, and it's just stayed with me over the years. My mom still has the very first project I ever made. It was just a simple little walnut piece of walnut cut in the shape of a key, and it had some cup, cup hooks on it. And uh, it was a it was a key holder, and she still has it to this day, hanging in her kitchen. So, and then later in that year, I made a kind of a writing secretary, if you will. It was just a, a box with a 30 degree angle at the, on the front that uh, had some hinges on it, and you could open it and put stationery in. And I still have that to this day, but that's that's how my interest in woodworking started, was in a ninth grade woodshop class. Who was it that uh, inspired me? Well, it was probably my ninth grade shop teacher, Mr. Chambliss, at uh, Ferguson Junior High in Arlington, Texas. And he probably, you know, set the seed for me. But who really inspired me was Norm Abrams of the New Yankee Workshop. He made woodworking look so easy, and he showed so many different ways of doing things. He would show three or four ways over the course of three or four episodes of how to do the same thing, like, like making a mortise for a mortise and tenon joint. He, he would show, give you several different avenues to do that. And that's one thing I learned from him, and I, I try to incorporate some of that in my videos. I'll... Uh, I'll do something a couple of different ways. You know, I've, I've had viewers to ask me, well, why didn't you do it something this way? And, and well, sometimes I just didn't want to do it that way, but other times I'll, uh, I'll do it a certain way just to show people how it can be done that way. Next video I may do the same thing, and I may do it an entirely different way. But it's probably Norm Abrams inspired me the most. No, I haven't always been active. There were a number of years that, that I did hardly anything in the uh, in the 80s, late 70s and 80s. Did a few refinishing projects, but did very little active woodworking. It, it wasn't until about 1998 when I started watching uh, Norm Abrams. We moved into a new house. And we needed a dining table for our breakfast area. And I had been watching Norm Abrams. And he, he had this one episode where he built a trestle table. A shaker trestle table. I just love shaker style furniture. But it's so simple and it's so functional. But I watched this episode several times. And I thought, you know, how hard could that be? And at the time, I didn't even have any woodworking tools. I'd never made anything major. So, uh, so I go down to Lowe's or Home Depot, and I buy a uh, Craftsman table saw. My brother loaned me a router, and I think I had a, a hand drill, and you know, I bought a few bits and a few tools, and I made. I think I, I think I bought a hand plane, and I made that trestle table patterned after watching Norm Abrams do that. And we still use that trestle table to this day. And it was made in, I think, 1999. So. Hand tools or power tools? Well, both. Power tools really speed up a job and make it easier, but there's nothing more important for a woodworker to know how to use hand tools. It's just part of the the, the craft is is knowing how to use certain hand tools. What attracted me to start a YouTube channel? Well, I started watching YouTube, and I see how so many different people were posting so many different videos on so many different subjects, and. I ran across a couple of woodworking videos and 
Some were not very well done, probably as bad as my first few. And I thought, you know, these people, they're, they're trying to share their craft, and they're trying to uh, share what they know for other people to learn from. And some people were doing it very, very well, and there's many wonderful creators out there today, especially in the woodworking community. But, but there were so many videos and so many aspects. If you need to know how to do something, all you got to do is search it on YouTube, and you'll find somebody that's made a video on it. So I thought, if some of these people can do that, well, I most certainly can with my skills in woodworking and the fact that I worked for a training uh, division for a long time and I've actually you know, made some training videos uh, and training programs. I thought, well, if they can do it, I can do it. So I set out and tried. most difficult thing for me in creating YouTube videos was getting comfortable in front of the camera and speaking to an inanimate object. You know, talking to a camera. There's nobody there. Once I finally got past that thought that I wasn't talking to the camera, I was talking to my viewers or to the potential viewers. But that was the hardest thing is to get comfortable in front of the camera and to get past the fact that you're putting yourself out there for everybody uh, to see and potentially critique and criticize or potentially like and appreciate. But that's the hardest thing that was for me. What's on my iPod or iPad as far as music is concerned? Uh, Jimmy Buffett for sure. It's my go-to guy. It plays a lot in my shop. Jazz pianist Diane Krall, Robert Cray, another blues, uh, Ray Charles. That's pretty, pretty much most of the songs that are on my iPod. I've got a lot of instrumental stuff too. But. Oh, Windows PC. I've not taken the plunge. I've wanted to. I've wanted to switch to Mac because I hear everybody, especially the YouTube creators, seems like all the successful ones use Mac, but um, I haven't bit the bullet yet. Uh, and uh, staying right now with Windows on the Windows 10 platform. My favorite genre in woodworking, it goes in circles. I made furniture for a number of years, and that's all I did. Matter of fact, I said one time, ah, I'm not interested in learning how to turn stuff on a lathe. I'll never do that. But I got burnt out making furniture, so I decided to, well, I'll try my hand at, at turning pens. So I got into pen making, and then I got into pen segmented pen making, and and then I got into making heirloom toys, and uh, I think my next area I'm going to get into is in Tarsha. I've got a cousin that lives in West Texas that just does some beautiful work, some beautiful work. And uh, I've talked to him about teaching me. So I think in Tarsha is going to be one of my next areas. I may not like it, but at least I can say I tried it, and it, uh, then again, I may love it. So... So my favorite, probably the smaller stuff now. Ask me in six months and I may be making furniture again. But right now I like the smaller stuff, the you know, segmented pen turning, the things that I can get really creative with, with different materials and shapes, and, uh, and toy making. I enjoy that right now. Probably my two most favorite projects that I've ever done. I made an oak sleigh bed for my daughter. And it's in her bedroom. It's, uh, probably the most difficult project I've, I've uh, ever taken on. Uh, it's a Shaker oak style sleigh bed. You can see a picture of it on the video I posted, I don't know, several weeks ago about my project resume. And 
it was real challenging. Some cove cutting on the table saw, some slanted mortise and tenon joints. There was a lot of things that I'd never done before. So it was real challenging and, and, and came out pretty nice. Uh, but. And the other one is, on the other end of the spectrum, it's a segmented pin that I entered into the uh, International Association of Pin Turners uh, contest, I think it was probably in 2012, 2013. But it was a segmented pin made of eucalyptus, white oak, strips of aluminum, uh, uh, bloodwood, and uh, the design on it was such that there were vertical lines running up and down the cap and it had to be drilled just dead on center otherwise all those segments wouldn't have come out equal and that pin actually placed third in, in a contest of a lot of uh, a lot of entries so I was kind of proud of that so those are probably two of my most uh, favorite projects so what's next for LL Woodworks? Well continue to grow my YouTube channel and you do that by good content, good videos. You know, YouTube viewers, they're, they're smart. They're, they're not going to watch badly made videos or bad information. So the responsibility is there to put out good quality with accurate information. Um, I would like to do some collaborations with some other woodworking YouTubers. Uh, it's always fun to work with fellow woodworkers in projects. I'm going to grow my woodworking business, furniture repair, uh, commission pieces. I'll continue to do woodworking shows where I sell my heirloom toys and my fine writing instruments and pens and things. And possibly in the future do some woodworking classes or a woodworking school of some kind where I teach beginners woodworking. Or, or so children in, in some form or fashion of a certain age group the basics of, of some woodworking. I've got an interest in doing that. Uh, just stay busy in, in the woodworking community and in the YouTube community. That's what's next, I hope, for LO Woodworks. And I appreciate everybody, all my subscribers, so much. And all the comments. See, I learn from the comments. As you give me comments, you give me feedback. Uh, it helps me to evaluate myself. And, and all of that lends to growth for Lynn Lacey and LL Woodworks. And I appreciate it.